Good morning. Everybody hear me all right? Yeah. You know, while I was thinking about what I wanted to speak about today, I just kind of put it back to what was the goal for my cell group. And I thought about what makes us an unstoppable force for God and what glorifies him the most, and that is unity. Unity in his word, unity in his love. So love is, love is what we try and experience. And basically for, for the ones that you don't know, I'm a supervisor at Prince, and uh, part of my job is if there's something that goes wrong, we basically have to do a investigation of that. We have to try and find what the root cause of that. And so with the goal of trying to create unity, trying to find how to keep that love, the root that I find always turns back to pride. So what is the definition of pride? We're going to mainly focus today on, on the second two here. A feeling that you are more important or better than other people. A feeling that is not how God created us to be. A high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity, importance, merit, or superiority, whether as cherished in the mind or as displayed in bearing, conduct, or etc. You know, pride is something that I've had in my own life, and, and I've worked harder each and every day to try and get, remove that from me. So, as an example, got a glass here. We're going to add some water. The water is basically going to represent the water that's in us. When we say that we are Christians, you know, Christ's living water is within us. So we're going to add just one drop of poison here. We're just going to let that sit. We take a step back and look at the first sin that we see Satan committed that separated him from God. If you'll turn to Isaiah 14, we're going to look at verses 12 and 14. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. And what Satan had done at that point was, You know, if we take a look at who he was, he was a high-ranking angel. But he decided in his heart that he was better than God. That he knew how to do it better than God. That he deserved the highest praise. That he would ascend above God. That he should become God. When we do this, we let pride into our lives. You know, we, we let pride into our lives by just saying that what we've done is good enough. Let's take a look at uh, Proverbs and see what God says about pride and how he feels. Proverbs 16.5 is where we'll start. The 
The Lord detests all proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. Now on into 8.13. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, and perverse speech. And in 16.18. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Now, a lot of times we let pride in end our life by not spending enough time before we worship and just prayer. And we take a look at, at everything that we do. If our heart's not in it in the right direction, then we're breaking the second commandment by just saying that, that it, oh well, you know, God still loves me. It's going to be good enough but we have to actually have our pride removed from ourselves and seek God in that. When we look at other people and just say to ourselves, you know, at least I'm not like them. It should be all right. I'm better than they are. And that's just another example of pride. We don't need to compare ourselves to our brothers and sisters. We should compare ourselves to Christ. In the example that he's given to us. You know, we've, we've heard of the seven deadly sins. You know, it's something that the Catholic Church back in the 6th century had kind of promoted and still do to a certain extent today, but that actually originated by a Greek theologian, and it was actually eight of them to start with. And how he originally measured them was how they offended love. It wasn't just calling out this sin, this sin, this sin's bad. It was how it affected against love. So that's, that's how I feel that we need to strengthen ourselves and get to unity and removing that pride from ourselves. You know, there's so many places that talk about this in the Bible and you know, in Matthew 3, in Luke 18, 1 Peter 5. But we're going to start with uh, taking a look at James. Chapter 4, verse 6 through 10. But he gives us more grace. That is why, why Scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. You know, there's so many places that, that talk about pride. Pride itself is used about 60 times in the Bible. But when you throw in prideful, boastful, puffed up, you get a lot closer to 200. And, you know, when you look at so many things that's in the Bible, God repeats himself so many times to just try and stress that point. You know, this is what's important. So that is, is kind of why I've been led to this today. Mighty Joe. Yes, sir. Would you like to drink this water? Don't think so? No. Why not? <laughs> that I did. But it was just one drop of pride. The rest of the glass should still be 99% pure. But... Can everybody see it okay? You know, we just put one drop in there, but it's actually affected our whole glass. And if that water represents what's in us, we can see one drop of pride can affect all whole lives and everything that we do. So, I'm actually, sorry guys, I'm gonna add a little.
We're going to stay in James chapter 4. I'm going to back up to verse 1 through 3. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. You know, if, if we have that prideful intent in our heart, you know, we're not letting God guide us in everything that we do. And so we have to repent of that, to forgive others, and just seek God's wisdom. In in Ezekiel 28, it gives a really good description of, of how Satan was before, where his ranking was. But, and in Isaiah also, it, it really talks about, in the end, Satan will be no more. We know what the outcome's going to be. And in the final words of that chapter, it simply says, then they will know that I am the Lord their God because he will be destroyed. Staying in James 4. Verse 12. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? You know, staying with seeking what God wants us to do, not judging others, you know, just, just showing the love, and that'll create the unity. We aren't anywhere close to being able to judge each other. You know, if the opposite of a lot of times we look at pride and we say that that's humility, in which it is, but if we sit there and say that, well, I can't do anything right, I'm not good enough, you know, that's not humility. You know, that basically is just self-doubt, depression, and that's not what the Bible says we're supposed to be at either. So there is things to be proud of. You can be proud of your children, be proud of your friends, be proud of the work that you do. But just don't let it get in the way. Don't let it become a stepping, stumbling block to where we're actually trying to edify our brothers and sisters, to bring them up. You know, when we go back to our definition of pride, the very first one, that's one that is okay. A feeling that you respect yourself and deserve to be respected by other people. You know, don't back down when you're showing your love for Christ, when you're leading that example. Don't be afraid to show his love that's been in your life. And... We basically just need to let God be God. Don't let pride be the poison of your life and humble yourself to God. On uh, today's ministry time, I've asked the guys just to uh, a couple of songs. The first two, we do a lot in our cell, so I just wanted to share that with you guys and then got a couple more after that. So just... Basically, however the Holy Spirit leads you, if you want prayer, come for prayer. Find somebody to pray with you. Find your accountability partner, your cell leader, whatever. Just, so thank you.